Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> okay, so Lynn and I have been running around trying to manage our sand and gravel, make sure we don't need any more. Uh, we have kind of a need for this stuff that's sitting on the driveway. Um, we're, we're watching the, the water flow yesterday. It was a major uh, torrent at one point there, mm -hmm. just to make sure that the chicken pen didn't flood on the inside. So we are looking at that. Um, there we go. Yeah, I can see you want to move. <laughs> I know. He's okay. The check. Ah, he is opening the gate now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so what we're looking at now, guys, is it's broken cloud this way, but not so much that way, and that's where our weather comes from. So we're looking at, you know, what can we get done and what can't we? Uh, right now, Michael has to get the painting done on the inside. Joseph has some minor tacking to do here. And once that's done, then we will have Michael finish that up. Okay, let's get this day started. Ma is liking Cedra. Cedra knows not to go in the house. So she likes that, but she also likes that she's protective of the land and shoes the other dogs away. Keeps them away from attacking the chicken pens, right guys? I'll probably get questions as to why we didn't have the hollow block a little further out or in. Uh, the fence is, the fence has to be just a little bit on your side of, of true. There's no such thing as a good neighbor fence here. Our hope is today that we get these four panels in. Joseph has welded up. I'm not so worried about the roadside right now. Get this done because the roadside is super easy to deal with. But here we've got some digging to do and that sort of thing. So as bodies free up from their tasks, like Michael is gonna do, get one coat of paint on the inside of the house, and then he will manage the second and third coats uh, if and when, and I say when, it starts to rain. This old carcass wants to talk about hiring again and how would we shift what we've been doing here. But first, some of the video that you're going to see here in a minute is got white balance issues. So I'm going to come here and park under the trees. So how would we shift what we did? Well, first, we didn't look to the future enough and a little bit too much provincial thinking in our project. And so that probably caused us a little bit of issue here, a little bit, because you have to remember that one of our key parts to this whole uh, build was to have fun as we build a home, not a house, a home. There's a difference. So where would we have shifted? Well, Masoons often come with a helper and often that helper is a, a close neighbor or, or another family member. And so in many ways, this is an extension of the wage that the Masoon is going to get. And if there's one thing that we learned out of our Masoon's helpers is that they were pure labor. They weren't helpers. And after talking to the guy up, up the street here, who's building a, a convenience store, I got talking to him about uh, building and he's built, I don't know, half a dozen places here. So here's the kicker. What he says is you hire a masseur. You don't need a foreman. He's from the UK. He's also acting as his foreman. So he's not, not paying any of those kind of rates. So his masseur is his key guy. Then what he has is masseur helpers but they are skilled labor guys, skilled labor. And that's where we kind of dropped the ball on this. So we ended up paying skilled labor prices instead of labor prices for our masoons helpers. Uh, so we made an error in that, but that's a learning curve. And uh, Lynn just told me that that cost us about $1.15 <laughs> a day Canadian. So probably about a dollar. Uh, US a day. So insignificant as far as I'm concerned. Because remember, our focus was to be having 
fun on this job, and that's the crew that we built here. We had errors, no question. But moving forward, looking at, you know, possibly this piece of land in San Ramijo, we're looking at maybe a condo tell type of situation. Uh, you know, six to eight rooms. It's not that big a community. That's going to be more than enough. And a side unit that would be for us detached from that. But how would we shift different? Well, you need a lot of labor for digging in your basement or basement. <laughs> digging in your foundation and your pillars and your posties and, and, and tie beams and all that stuff. So you need a lot of labor there. And out of that will come a lot of people that say they've got experience, but you need to spend time evaluating them. So let's say we're digging in our septic tank. My first thing would be to watch the massoons. As soon as the massoon has done, then I would say, okay, now I want to see your laborers do this to find out if they're skilled labor or whether they're just bull labor. And that's the difference here. Okay. So in our community as an example, bull labor is 350 pesos a day. Now, only out of respect for the captain, he said, do not give them higher rates. And I said, but the minimum wage, ah, da, 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 here, 350. <laughs> so listen to him. You're trying to join in with the community here, right, guys? So that is part of it. So general bull labor is 350. The uh, skilled helper, 400, 450, somewhere in that range, okay? And then your lead masoon, 550, 500, somewhere in that range. Now, again, I'm talking in our region of the Philippines. Luzon, especially down towards Manila, is going to cost you more. That's just all there is to it. At least they'll try and push that. Now, there was no way. We had guys showing up here that said, I am a high-skilled masoon. I want 700 and we just said bye bye and the reason being is that the foundation work the biller, pillars the beams the posties that's almost done by everybody here and i mean everybody okay um now of course we wanted to step up a little bit not as many errors please thank you so we would have shifted in that in that amount of labor that again, we're going to feed off of our barangay because we're going to show a sense of community here. And if we treat them fair, then even the workers will, you know, spread the word. I know a welder. I know this. I know that. And again, everybody's an expert at everything here. <laughs> and you got to be careful of that stuff. So all oh, those two guys that left earlier are already coming back. It's not uncommon, guys. I'll bet this kid up here is... 10 years old. <laughs> so take some time and evaluate your laborers to find out whether they are bull labor or experienced labor. Do not get dragged into this multiple masoon thing as we did and understand that, that if you've got like say a couple of 35 year olds and a 50 or 60 year old, then your masoon is that 60 year old because those two other masoons are still at that learning stage um, or they're not but at the end of the day they are skilled labor what you're going to try and do now over the next little bit until the roof goes on is start evaluating as much as you can to find out out of your bull labor how many of those people have qualifications to do things like skim coating and you know not painting anybody can paint um, but yeah, spend some time. You never know who you're gonna pull out of there with experience. Now, I need to talk to you about Michael. Michael is our electrician. Michael came to us and said, I can do your electrical, I did your neighbors. I said, oh, okay, well, we'll go talk to the neighbor and, and see how it was. And now we found out that he is not accredited uh, through the, what they call Sebeco here. It's Cebu Electrical. Um, whatever it is. And so he's not recognized by them, but you don't need to be recognized to get your electrical done. Now, he came to us early and said, 
but can I also help with labor? And so he said, sure. And, but we're not gonna pay electrical rates. Oh, no, 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 I understand. All, you know, painting, all that stuff is at labor rate. And not skilled labor guys, right? Just general labor rate. And out of that, from Michael, we found different skill sets. One is welding. Now we've still committed to Joseph that he gets practice time on welding. A lot of popcorn welding, as one subscriber pointed out. But, you know, he's getting the tax done so that Michael can go back later, clean it up, and get those long beads in that we need. I might not be using that terminology correct. But the main message out of all of this is don't be afraid of fluctuating your rates with these guys. We have had no pushback from our laborers, other than that original crew, We've had no pushback from them. Anytime the guys have stepped up, shown their skills, and we say, okay, we want you to start doing uh, the, the, the putty, or we want you to start doing the, the, the splatter layer, as I call it, um, then we shift the rates. And the first time that happened, they all went, mom. And Lynn just said, no, you were doing skilled labor, so we increased your rate for that day, but anything else will be, it. we had, zero pushback on this guys absolutely no pushback so it was great um, and I think what you'll find is that if you do that they're apt to hang around a little bit longer and the main reason is that they are getting fairly consistent work and for that guy that turns around and says mom look I'm an electrician I want to get paid you know 500 550 per day even if I'm doing labor work don't even need them. Next, there's a hundred million people here, guys. There is a lot of labor. You know, when you consider our project and how small it was, altogether we've probably used, well, because, okay, so some of these guys only lasted one or two days, right? But we probably pulled close to 30, maybe closer to 40 people out of all of this. So that's the key that I think we would do moving forward. And like I said, if somebody can't accept that they will get paid higher for, for the quality work, but otherwise, if you want labor, then we've got labor. And I think that they are more concerned about assuring that they're gonna get a phone call back by not having to worry about a phone call because they're on site every day doing labor. <laughs> so that's how we would shift it. Uh, really, really, really happy with our, two mas or our three masoon, three helper thing. But on the labor side, I would have changed that now that we know a little bit more. And at the end of the day, the Lambusen and the Lawis guys, they merged together just fine. They were joking and having a great time before the week was out. And one final note on the labor, general labor, feed off your barangay. I really firmly believe that that will help you in your community. Your captain will help you the community will start helping you, and out of the word work will come skilled labor when you need it most. Getting back to fun. Why do I want to have all that negativity around me? That's supposed to be our castle. That's supposed to be the castle, the home, not a house. Okay? Why do I want all that negativity around me? Right? I mean, you know, you watch people now and all they watch, they don't watch news anymore. They watch opinion news, like non-stop editorial. Editorial used to be from the station, but now every single host on some of these stations, well, on these particular stations, they're doing nothing but opinion news. You're not prepared to make up your own mind and have a balance of everything that you're watching. Anyway, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> but back to negativity. I don't want all that negativity around my house. Okay? Because I'm trying to build a home. And I don't need all of that, that angst that goes along with, you know, being the hammer constantly. Okay? That's why we have done what we have done in having fun with this project. And I think it's important to have that distinction between home and and house. And I think far too often people start building, they get so involved with it 
that when it's time to just relax and have a day-to-day -day life, they can't do it. And they realize that they built a house and not a home. Quite a difference, right? Sort of as part two of this hiring process comes down to the number of comments that I have about they're lazy, they're lazy, they're lazy. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, I'm going to call it straight up what it is. I went through all this in Canada, decades of this stuff, and it got even worse when they got cell phones. They wouldn't put the damn things down, couldn't get any workload out of the guys at all. Then along came the whole BS of, oh, well, I will just call it a safety issue. Then we can have relax. Well, they tried to pull that on me one day. None of them had their cell phones. They had to just sit there. I made them go up to the lunchroom. They weren't allowed to have coffee. They weren't allowed to have anything. They were working at that time. No, I'm the tyrant. I can be that way. But I want to have fun on my job sites. If I don't have the crew that's not fun, then just go away. I find other people. I'm going to surround myself. Why? You're going to sleep a third of your life away. You're going to work a third of your life. You only have a third of your life left. Which leads me to, why are you shopping and doing all the domestic BS on the weekend? Those are the only two days a week that you get for yourself. Stores are open 24 hours a day. <laughs> okay, enough of all that. Let's get back to the build. So over here, we decided to build a little bit of a form. And again, we're always tapering our concrete so that it will wick the water away. Uh, Lynn's garden is all getting its hollow block in. That will be complete today. And we got all of the last four fence pieces in. And we almost made a mistake in thinking that we were going to have to change or cut one of these panels all up until we remembered that we have to be 15 meters back from the high water mark. Ours is a reprop, so it's our wall. That is the high water, it virtually goes straight up. <laughs> And that was all approved by the DNR guys, so we're within compliance on the wall and our pins. So we were within compliance on coming back on the front part of the property. But what we forgot was, ours, our second pin, is way up the front there. It's another five paces. So we brought the other fence piece down to here. Our neighbor is way back here because their wall is virtually straight. So we extend it out and put that one extra piece in there. So not unhappy about that at all. Now, it might look a little weird if we turned around and made a fence that was, you know, at an angle. We will have a fence at the front of the house, just a short little one, you know, two and a half feet or whatever, um, that'll go across the front and sort of define if we've got kids here or whatever, that, you know, they're not gonna go running into the water, okay? So there we go. Um, we did a kick down here. The guys were totally underestimating how high this was getting. Uh, they were getting as high as three blocks high here. And again, another error. The guys aren't thinking. They needed to do the steps. <laughs> so at this point, it kind of goes, woo. <laughs> I don't care. It's a fence. We can't see that part of it. I'm okay with it. Up the front, uh, we got more panels in. I'm not sure how many we got left. I'm not going to run you all the way up there. And at this point, I'm going to say to you, later Gators.